Welcome to the latest episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin, and this week we'll be discussing the 1990 horror classic, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, starring Christian Slater, Steve Buscemi, Debbie Harry, James Reamer, Ray Don Chong, the list goes on and on. For those of you joining us for the first time, the B-Movie Club, each week we talk about a forgotten classic or guilty pleasure. I'll post it on the internet, and you can send me your favorite scenes, favorite quotes, anything else you want to say, any movie suggestions, please keep them coming. You can reach me through our Facebook page, Original B Movie Club. Don't forget to like it, <laughs> and then press the like button. Um, also, uh, you can reach me through our YouTube page, KD9575. Hit the subscribe button, won't you? And if you want to reach me more immediately, you can reach me through Twitter at KD9575, my initials and my birthday. So add that to your calendar as well. Don't forget to spread the word and tell your homies the more the merrier. Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. In this, uh, we see uh, kind of a socialite, you know, upper middle class lady preparing for a dinner party. Um, but she opens up her pantry, and it's really a dungeon wherein a little boy who is delivering papers is now chained up in there. Um, basically, for some reason, she likes to carve up little boys and cook them in her oven. Kind of a Hansel and gretel -y kind of thing. Um, in order to delay the inevitable, uh, the little boy decides to read from her book... Uh, like stories in order as kind of a way to um, kind of get her mind off chopping him up and saving him, you know, save his life for, for a moment, if only. Kind of a Queen Scheherazade, a Thousand One Arabian Nights kind of deal. Um, so he starts off reading the first stories. Uh, the first story is about a college student who uh, is, he's poor. But in order to pay for his, you know, his tuition and books and housing, I guess, he uh, will buy kind of antiquities and sell them for a profit. Because he's so poor, he gets picked on by the rich kids in school. Uh, basically, Steve Buscemi is the poor guy. Christian Slater is kind of the guy who lives down the hall who's wealthy but has a mean, wealthy sister and a mean buddy who pick on this guy all the time. So he gets his revenge. How does he do it? Well, the latest antiquity he acquires is an ancient Egyptian mummy. And therein, the ancient Egyptian mummy is a scroll that allows him to animate the mummy. And he gets his revenge. I don't want to spoil everything, uh, but there's some twists. It's, it's fun. It's real uh, Tales from the Dark Side uh, twisteroo going there, okay? It's that good Tales from the Dark Side fun, if you remember that old TV show. Uh, another little bizarre twist. Julianne Moore plays the, the wealthy uh, evil sister. So you got Christian Slater, Steve Buscemi, Julianne Moore. Now, at the time, none of them were particularly famous, okay? So I think Christian Slater was probably the biggest star. This is 1990. He'd been in a few things. But he had not yet reached the heights that Christian Slater would reach. And of course, Steve Buscemi and Julianne Moore were not even blips on the radar yet. So there you go. Um, so then there's then it cuts back to the, the older woman getting ready for dinner. And the poor little boy in the, in the dungeon. The woman, by the way, is Debbie Harry, who you might remember from Blondie, the rock group from like the late 70s. The little boy is Joey Lawrence's little brother, Matthew Lawrence, who has been in... A few things in the 90s. Um, so anyway, he starts reading the next story. This story is about um, a wealthy old family. There's a lot of wealthy old families going on here. Uh, who have made their money through pharmaceuticals. And basically they tested all of their products upon cats. So um, basically now there's, an, there's a cat. Literally a house cat. A domesticated short hair from the looks of it, who's terrorizing their family. Literally, one by one, they start to bite the dust, spoiler alert, until there's one guy left. And to get rid of the cat once and for all, he hires a hitman to hit the cat. And I don't want to give everything away, 
but things don't work out quite as well as they plan. Uh, the problem with this one is at the end of the day it's supposed to be scary but it's a house cat. It's not a saber-toothed tiger, okay? It's not a, a rabid lion or any kind of leopard or a panther or cheetah. It's a house cat. So how scary can it really be, okay? Anyway, moving on. Uh, the third and final story uh, is called The Lover's Vow. It has James Reamer is this down-on-his-luck artist who has been painting, but no one wants to buy his stuff. His agent drops him. He's about to be, you know, kicked out on the street. Um, but he witnesses a murder. And the murder uh, was perpetrated by this crazy gargoyle-looking creature who swooped down, killed this guy, and threatened to kill James Reamer as well, unless he promised not to tell anybody what he saw, never to describe that it was a gargoyle-looking creature. Do you promise not to tell? So he agrees to, to, to promise, says, I won't tell anybody what that you're a crazy gargoyle-looking creature. I'll keep it under my hat. Um, so he gets to go free. That same night, coincidentally, he meets... Uh, a woman walking down the street. He lives in kind of a crappy neighborhood in New York, so you just don't want to do that. He finds her, he rescues her, takes her back to his place. Doesn't tell her anything about the gargoyle. Just kind of like, hey, it's an unsafe neighborhood, you don't want to be out here. Um, one thing leads to another, they have a little romance. Um, and he's suddenly very successful. His paintings are doing well in a way that they hadn't done before. His agent rehires him. Ten years pass, he's married with this woman. They have two beautiful children. And something happens. I don't, this one's really the big twist to root. I don't want to give it all the way. But it's, it's a twist, okay? Now, you may see it coming a mile away, or you may be shocked and surprised, but nonetheless, I don't want to spoil it. So, that one ends in kind of an interesting way. Cut back to the final story. So now it's time for her to prepare the poor little boy. She's got, you know, her knives ready and spices and things like that. Uh, cumin. Um, but, he escapes. Spoiler alert. There you go. It's a happy ending after all. Good times. Have by all. Um, <laughs> this movie came out in 1990. And it is unofficially called the actual third Creepshow movie. Because if you remember, Creepshow came out in the early 80s. I've done, if you haven't seen my B Movie Club episode, go on YouTube, check it out. Came out in the 80s, and it was a big hit, written mainly by Stephen King, directed by George Romero, who you know did all like the zombie movies, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead. Um, it was a huge hit. So um, they wanted to turn it into a TV show. Okay, kind of a Twilight Zone, uh, Night Gallery, Outer Limits kind of deal. Um, they did. They called it Tales from the Dark Side. Okay, and that lasted for several years. Um, in the late 80s, they came out with Creepshow 2. Uh, Stephen King really didn't have much to do with it. I think one of the stories came from something that he'd written in a book uh, previously. George Romero was still heavily involved with Creepshow 2. Um, then, you know, you got Creepshow 2, you got Tales from the Dark Side, a TV series. At the dawn of the 90s, then they created Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Which again, George Romero is still involved with it. Um, and it's had a lot of the same uh, people who worked on Creepshow 2 still in this. The reason why they call it the unofficial uh, sequel is that they actually, the studio actually created a movie called Creepshow 3 which is not a good movie. As far as I know, it was straight to video. No George Romero, no Stephen King. No quality, I guess is what it comes down to. So there you have it. Um, the stories that are in this movie. Uh, the original one, or the original, the first one with uh, Christian Slater about the mummy was actually written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle 100 years ago or so. Um, if, if you know anything, he was the guy who wrote the Sherlock Holmes novels. So there you go. Cat from Hell, which was the second story about the crazy cat, and as the title suggests, uh, was, was written by Stephen King, and that was based upon a short story he had written. Uh, George Romero is heavily has his hands throughout this uh, process. 
Um, and then the final one, The Lover's Vow, was actually based upon um, Japanese folklore about this gargoyle who, well, if I tell you anything else about it, I'm going to give away the twist. So take it from me, it was based upon Japanese folklore, okay? There you have it. Um, it, it did all right in the box office. I believe it opened third when it came out. It made its money back. As I said, it kind of springboarded uh, the careers of Christian Slater, Steve Buscemi, Julianne Moore. Debbie Harry, I'm not sure it did much for her. What can I tell you? Um, hey, Debbie Harry actually um, appeared in a couple episodes of the actual original TV series, Tales from the Dark Side. I have to tell you, the TV show, Tales from the Dark Side, to this day, has the most frightening opening credits in the world, as far as I'm concerned, for a TV show. You know, it's like, there's a world around you in the daytime, but there's another world, just as real, but not so brightly lit. It was terrifying. Now granted, I was 10 years old, so maybe my ideas of what's terrifying have changed in the last 27 years. What can I tell you? Good show, enjoyable movie. Um, I enjoyed certain aspects of the movie more than others. I thought the Mummy one was fun. Cat from Hell, a mm, little shaky. Uh, Lover's Dow was pretty good as well. So, there you have it. It, uh, sadly, had a 33% rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Travesty. Travesty. Now, granted, it was only based upon 15 reviews, so maybe if you're a big fan of Tales from the Dark Side of the movie, you'll rush to Rotten Tomatoes. Add your own reviews. Please do so. Um, next week, I'm staying about that same time period, about 88. I'm going to the comedy genre, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starring the late, great John Candy, and the still-around Steve Martin. So check that out. That is streaming instantly on Netflix. Send in your questions, comments, favorite scenes, favorite quotes. Tell a friend, okay? Spread the word. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote. And here it is. Everybody loves a happy ending, huh? So there you have it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to tell a friend. Next week, trains, planes, and automobiles. Be well. <laughs>